Warm welcome to worship as we gather today with a special focus on stewardship. Stewardship Sunday. I was reminded of Harvest Thanksgiving and in many ways these particular Sundays, these themes are very closely related. For instance, we'll be using a Harvest Thanksgiving prayer today which links in nicely with stewardship. Such a broad topic. St Paul even talks about that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. So we're stewards of the gospel, stewards of the sacraments and so forth, as well as stewards of our gifts and stewards of our financial contributions as well. I like this image that I found on the internet there of open hands. And we're reminded as we talk about our stewardship of God's generosity with us, first of all. And that's the main point of Stewardship Sunday, is recognising God's generosity, His gifts to us. Let us begin. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on Him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing the opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King.
Friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you that by our fallen nature we are sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word and deed. Therefore we flee to you for your refuge, to your infinite mercy, and plead for your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us, and for his sake forgive us all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase our knowledge of you and your will, and make us obedient to your word, so that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become the children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Amen. One of the things we are stewards of is the word of God, such a great gift to us. We sing how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord.
verses today from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Turn to the Kyrie slide and then go to the prayer of the day. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Ever loving God, send out messengers to proclaim your victory over death to the whole world so that people everywhere hear the good news and receive eternal life. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just a brief teaching point today, dear friends, as an introduction to the topic of stewardship. I was pleased to also speak about this topic at our Wednesday Bible study group and to open up the area and to dig into some passages of the Bible on that particular day. And I began by asking whether any of the group had been caretakers in some respect, in some sense in their lives. Think about it for a moment if you've been a caretaker. What does it mean to be a caretaker? I've met people who've taken care of Aboriginal communities, whether it's Kintor or Cohen in North Queensland, volunteers who've gone to serve the community for a short period of time. My son Judah is an engineer, but he's also a tennis coach on the side. And he was basically running the tennis club there in Mount Isa for three years while he was in the mines. Well, he was kind of like a caretaker of the tennis club for the community. And Kelly and I were camp parents at a Christian Life Week there at Yapoon one year. And we, those children weren't ours, but if in a sense we were taking care of them for that week as spiritual mother and father in a sense. So we get the idea of caretaker it's not about ownership, is it? When Adam and Eve were given the task of working the garden, they didn't own the garden. That's God's garden. But they were there to serve in the garden. And that's the spirit of stewardship. It is about a delegated responsibility. That's a good little phrase I read in a theological dictionary through the week. Stewardship delegated responsibility that we have. It's God's earth and everything, and we are here to serve as best we can. We'll now pause for the scripture readings.
Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, the first reading this morning is from the Old Testament. It's from Deuteronomy. It's a, um, God talking to his people and giving them commandments. And it says this in uh, chapter 8, uh, verses 7, uh, down to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in, in the valleys and the hills, a land with wheat and barley, wine and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. Now when you have eaten and are satisfied, Praise the Lord, God, for his good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, and when you build your fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and your gold increase, and all of you have multiplied, then you'll be heart, your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He has led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that, that thirsty and waterless land, and as venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your, father had, your fathers had never known, to humble and to test you, so in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power, my strength, or my hands have produced this wealth for me, but remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and to confirm his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. Praise be to God for his word. Thanks be to God. Now we're going over to 2 Corinthians. And 2 Corinthians 8, uh, 7 to 15. And this is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. I'm reading from chapter 8, verses 7 to 15. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnest, and in your love for us, see that you excel in this grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty might become rich. And so here is my advice about what is best for you in this manner. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have desires to do so. Now, finish that work, so that your eager willingness to do may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what he has, not according to what he does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved, relieved that you are hard pressed, but that, may, that, but that might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what, is, what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he that gathered much did not have too much, and he that gathered little did not have too little. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the last day that I will be reading from here. And I want to thank everybody in the nursing home for all your encouragement you've given to me and how I'm speaking to you loudly and clearly. And I, I thank God for the privilege of doing this. It's now time for me to do something else. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. Where Jesus says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. We now share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Today is a topical sermon. There are many different ways to do sermons. Classically, you have the three-point sermon, beginning, three points and then a conclusion. Well, this is what we call a topical sermon, where there's not one central text, but it's a little bit like a collage. We're talking about stewardship and we're bringing scriptures, important scriptures, to bear on the topic. And the topic today is faith, service and a glad heart as we speak about stewardship. Well, something that stimulated me through the week was a little YouTube clip that one of my friends sent me. And it was from a Canadian, Dr. Jordan Peterson, who is something of what we call a polymath, meaning he's kind of a theologian, he's kind of a psychologist, he's kind of a writer, he's kind of a social commentator. <laughs> this is called um, interdisciplinary matters. So it's kind of like a, not an expert, but a commentator in different areas. And I'm certainly not endorsing everything that Jordan Peterson might say in his writings. But I really did take notice of his challenge to the churches in this particular video clip that I was sent. I took notice because it energises us as a church. Sometimes we go softly, softly as a church, lest we cause any offence to anyone. But this was a challenge to say, no, be on the front foot as a church. Be energised. Be energised in the area of stewardship. Invite young men to come to church. And Jordan Peterson says, remind them who they are in the deepest sense and help them become that. And I really love that quote because I think it can be applied to the Christian gospel as well. He said, remind them who they are in the deepest sense and help them become that. Isn't that what we're doing in church? We're reminding each other, each other who we are in Christ. You are light, Paul says in Ephesians. Now shine as light who you are. Who are you? You are light. You are children of God. Now be children of God. Now serve as children of God. Remind them who they are in the deeper sense and help them become that. How does this apply to stewardship? Well, this is what we're aiming to do. We're starting with who we are in Christ, dearly beloved children of God, saints in the Lord. Yes, we're sinners, but we're also saints in the Lord. We are light. We are to shine as light. We are to use the gifts, stewardship that we have been given, not to serve ourselves to our own glory, but to the glory of God. That's an important aspect of stewardship as well. To God be the glory of great things he has done. That's the difference between Christian stewardship and stewardship in the general sense. We are asking our public servants, aren't we, to be good stewards of public funds, to keep them accountable. They're supposed to be good stewards in their portfolios. Well, yes, a Christian can serve in public office as well, but of course their final authority the one to whom all glory goes is God in their service. So when they go to their office job there on King William Street, they're not really serving the government of the day, but they're serving the Lord through their work, through their vocation. One of our own, Jean Veith, has written some very good books in the area of stewardship. And I love the point that he makes that actually vocation is kind of that liminal space, that in-between space for being in the world but not of the world. As Christians we are in the world but we're not of the world, we're not serving the world. And yet 
In between there is vocation, our work, which can be paid or it can be volunteer, which can be raising children. We work in all sorts of ways. How are we in the world but not of the world? As we exercise our vocations, our calling. The Latin is vocare to call. Our calling, our callings. Not just to be a pastor, but to be a mum, a dad, to work in the charity shop through the week, whatever we might do in our service. Not to our glory, but to God's glory always. Not to the glory of Caesar, but to the glory of God. Let's go to the next slide. I've assembled a few texts in relation to this topic. The first one comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So as mentioned, we serve to the glory of God. We serve out of our faith. And the writer to the Hebrews says it's impossible to please God in an ultimate sense without faith. Yes, the service of a just and merciful Prime Minister President is pleasing to God in the general sense. We call this our civil or civic righteousness. Yes, that's pleasing to God. God calls Nebuchadnezzar to be just. God calls Caesar to be just and merciful in his particular role. But ultimately, what pleases God is what stems from faith. Our relationship with God is the essential thing in the end. Without faith, it is impossible to please God in the ultimate sense. But let's turn that around into the positive and say that, well, yes, it is pleasing to God when we serve out of our faith, out of faith motivation. And notice that this verse comes in Hebrews chapter 11. You know that chapter well with the catalogue of faithful people who've been serving the Lord out of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 begins, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, and so forth. Verse 4, by faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith Enoch was taken from this life. By faith Noah, and so forth. By faith Abraham. And it concludes with by faith Rahab. By faith the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient when they went over into the promised land. Even the little bit that Rahab did, that important service that she offered, that's a good illustration how God takes our everyday service and makes something of it. Even that is recognised in this catalogue in Hebrews chapter 11. So in the positive, yes, faith as a driving force, something that enables us, motivates us in our service of the Lord. Faith which has hope attached to it, faith which has energy, drive and vision attached to it as well. The simple point then, our stewardship is to find its inspiration in our faith, be driven by our faith, which in the end is a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the next slide. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You might remember a sermon that I shared some weeks ago. I was talking about how we identify the Trinity in different ways 
in the scriptures. And here again, we see the Trinity at work, don't we? Whatever we're doing, we're doing in the name of Jesus to the glory of the Father. This service, anything we do, whatever we do, with hearts and hands and voices, the little that we do every day, God takes and blesses. Just as in a moment we'll bring some of your offerings for those who are less advantaged, the homeless and the hungry and so forth, some of the goods, God will take those things and bless them as they are received gladly by people in need. Whatever we do, notice what St. Paul says, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's encouraging for us, isn't it? Importantly, however, in terms of church life, it kind of is helpful if it's going in the same direction, isn't it? If we're on the same page as a group. I've served parishes where energies are going in all sorts of different directions. People are serving faithfully in their own capacities, in their own ways, but energies are going in all sorts of different directions. As we talk about church life in the modern day, it's also important that somehow our service, whatever it is, is on the same page, going in the same direction. We think of St. Paul even, way back there, and the trouble he had with Corinth. Very gifted congregation, blessed in many ways, blessed by the Holy Spirit in many ways, but quite fractious, quite conflicted. Also the congregation at Galatia, where St. Paul had to insist on the meaning of the gospel, not the law of Moses, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. They weren't all like that. The community at Philippi, the joy, great joy theme that Paul expresses as he speaks to the people at Philippi. As the people of God, yes, we're exercising our ministries with great vigour and zeal, but importantly, we need to be going in the same direction. This is aided and abetted by our life of prayer as we humbly seek the will of God for our lives together. Let's go to the next slide. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver is cheerful, <laughs> do you think? Cheerful givers are also cheerful. This is an important tone that we place on the air of stewardship. Yes, stewardship is about sacrifice, but it's about joyful giving. As we see the blessings that come with our labour, the blessings that come with our sacrifice. Christians are joyful people. I went to Andrew Brooks' installation and Pastor Christian shared that Nehemiah passage. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Beautiful passage. Christians are people of joy. Easter joy. Resurrection joy. We give cheerfully and gladly. And our giving, our stewardship is based in the gospel, centred in the gospel. We don't give under compulsion, under the law, but we give with a cheerful heart with gospel hearts, knowing the grace of God. As I conclude, I thought the most wonderful way to conclude really is what we sing in the hymn. So let's go to the next slide. We give our whole self in terms of stewardship. At our Bible study on Wednesday, we also spoke about worship. What is worship? Yes, what we do here for an hour each Sunday. 
as we hear the word of God and also feed on the body and blood in the sacrament as we offer prayer. But all we do Monday through Saturday is also worship of the Lord, service of him. So we say with the hymn writer, now thank we all our God with hearts, yes, with hands, yes, and also with our voices. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many gifts to us. We especially thank you for the gift of your Son who died for us and gave us life. Help us to serve him with glad hearts in the, way, in the, in the ways that you have given us to do. And may we find fulfilment as we serve you in these ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We'll now sing the next song and our free will offering will be received. I thank you for life for the life that you gave. Now we're going to um, bless these goods. Normally uh, it would be a little bit more fulsome, but um, some were taken already yesterday. And we recognise that uh, the kindness of people and how this will help people in very real ways, especially with living pressures in today's economy. And in terms of the blessing, I'd like to actually use parts of the prayer of the day which are suitable Lord God, unless you care for us and give us what we need, all our work is in vain. Keep our hearts and minds set firmly on your word so that we may always trust in you and be generous with the gifts you have given us. And we pray, care for those who live in want 
and teach us to be generous with the gifts you have first given us. So, dear Lord, we ask your blessing upon these gifts that they will be received and meet a need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in the offering prayer. Lord, thank you for caring for us and providing us with all we need and much more. Strengthen our faith as we live our everyday lives. Make us bold and confident in trusting you and serving you and other people. Amen. After the words, Lord, hear us, our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you have protected the fruits of the earth and crowned the year with your blessing. We give you thanks for physical health, for the use of our senses, and for our intellect and thought. Make us good stewards of our abilities that we may bring glory to your name every day. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for supplying us with water. Help us to care for and manage our water resources wisely. Have mercy on those who are suffering from flood or drought and supply clean water to all who need it. As we face possibly a hot and dry summer, we pray for the volunteer fire services in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, gracious Father, for all the good things the earth produces by your provision we are clothed and fed and lack no good thing. Care for those who live in want and teach us to be generous with the gifts you have first given us. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the opportunity to work, learn and rest. Help us to serve you and others faithfully in our vocation and provide work for those who are unemployed or underemployed. Bless all places of learning and students, especially as they come to the end of the academic year. Help them to learn what is good, true and beautiful, to distinguish between right and wrong, and to contribute to the needs of our society. Give them strength and growth in the challenges ahead. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for works of beauty of every kind. By such things you have enriched and add a joy to our lives. Bless and encourage all that is good and uplifting in our arts, music and culture. Almighty God, we thank you for the financial gifts you have blessed us with. Teach us to use these gifts in ways that are pleasing to you. Warn and correct us when we falsely put our hope in worldly wealth. Grant our church and the wider church necessary funds to carry out its work of ministry and mission. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We keep in our prayers today, O oh Lord, the Traeger family after the passing of Noel, and we pray a rich measure of comfort upon them. And we thank you for Noel's life and witness Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for the gift of parents and children, family and friends. Let the light of your love shine in our homes. Help us to overcome strife and conflict with your patience and forgiveness. Help parents in the task of raising children. Comfort those who are lonely and give them good company. Lord God, unless you care for us and give us what we need, all our work is in vain. Keep our hearts and minds set firmly on your word, so that we may always trust in you and be generous with the gifts you have given us. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord with joy. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.